I have been testing two new AI models for the past week, and they represent something interesting. Two fundamentally different approaches to the same challenge. One prioritizes efficiency through architecture innovation, an 80 billion parameter model that only activates 3.7% of those parameters during inference. The other goes for raw capability, over a trillion parameters trained on 36 trillion tokens. Same team, completely different philosophies. Today, I'm breaking down both, what makes them different, how they actually perform, and the one you would choose one over the other. Here's the tension in AI development right now. Everyone wants more capable models, but the training and running them gets expensive fast. There are essentially two ways to approach this. You can innovate on architecture to make models more efficient, or you can scale up with more parameters and training data to push capability boundaries. Usually, companies focus on one direction, but the Quinn just released two flagship models that explore both passes simultaneously. On one side, Quinn 3 Max over a trillion parameters currently ranked third on the Alam Arena Tax leaderboard. On the other, Quinn 3 Max, which rethinks the transformer architecture to achieve performance comparable to dance 32 billion models while activating only a fraction of its parameters. By the end of this video, you will understand what makes Quinn 3 Next architecture different and where that efficiency show up in practice, how Quinn 3 Max performs in complex tasks compared to other top tier models I have used, and which approach makes sense for different types of projects. I have been using these alongside GPT-4, Claude, and models I typically reach for, so I will share where these fit in my actual workflow. Let's start with the one that surprised me. Quinn 3 next. Traditional transformer models have a straightforward scaling relationship. Want better performance? You typically need more parameters, more training compute, more inference resources. This works, but it creates practical limitations when you are running models in production or on resource-constrained environments. Dense transformers activate every parameter for every token. It's true, but there's an interesting question. Do you actually need 70 billion parameters to process the capital of France is Paris? Probably not. Quinn 3 next explore a different approach. What if the model could route tokens to only the parameters that are relevant for that specific computation? Quinn 3 next uses what they call a hybrid attention mechanism, combining gated delta net with gated attention. Let me break down what that actually means. Standard attention mechanisms compute the relationship between all tokens in your context window. As context grows, 32,000, 128,000 to 56,000 tokens, that computation costs increase quadratically. Delta net provides a linear time alternative for some of those attention operations, maintaining long-range dependencies without the quadratic scaling penalty. Then there's AltaSpark's mixture of expert architecture. The model has 80 billion total parameters, but during inference, it only activates about 3 billion. That's 3.7 figure. Each token gets routed to the specific expert that handled it best. They also implemented multi-token prediction during training. Instead of predicting one token ahead, the model learns to predict multiple future tokens simultaneously, which helps it learn longer-term dependency. The practical result, an 80 billion parameter model that performs comparably to the dense 32 billion model, using less than 10% of the training compute, and for inference with long context, over 32,000 tokens, the robot is significantly higher, more than 10 times in their benchmarks. Alright, enough architecture. Let's see what this means in practice. 
I have been running Quince Renex, eighty billion A3B instruct through agent workflows, the kind of multi-step task I would typically build in production. First test. A multi-step agent with access to web search, code execution, and file operations. Task, research quantum computing development, write a technical summary, generate comparison chart, save a structured report. Watch the tool selection. It searches first, then structures the data before writing. Good sequencing, no redundant calls. Total execution, 4.2 seconds for the complete workflow. I ran the same task on their dense 32 billion model, 8.1 seconds. Quin 3 next is notably faster while producing comparable output quality. But the interesting test was long context processing. I fed it a 120,000 token context, roughly a small technical book, and asked it to extract information and the cross reference multiple sections. This is where traditional transformers tend to slow down significantly. Quint 3 next stayed responsive. The hybrid attention architecture means it avoids a quadratic scaling penalty that typically kills performance with long context. Now let's talk about where this fits compared to what I have been using. For high throughput agent task, I have typically been reaching for GPT-4 Turbo or Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Both are solid but they can get expensive at scale. And with really long context, response times start to climb. Quint3NX has genuinely replaced GPT-4 Turbo for me in specific scenarios. Document processing pipelines, where I am handling 50k to 100k token context regularly. The speed difference is noticeable. Multi-step agent workflows where I need consistent tool calling, but don't need the absolute smartest model. It's faster and more cost effective and any production deployment where I'm, I am optimizing for throughput over maximum capability. Compared to Cloud 3.5 Hayeco, which is anthropic efficiency play, Quinn 3 next handle larger contexts better in my testing. Hayeco is excellent for shorter, rapid fire tasks, but once you cost 30,000 tokens, Quinn 3 next maintain better performance consistency. Against Gemini 1.5 Flash, which also targets the efficiency space, I would say they are competitive. Gemini has the advantage of being multimodal, out of the box. Quinn 3 next has better tool calling performance in my agent workflows. So it depends on your use case. Can Quinn 3 next replace GPT-4 or Cloud Opus for me? No, not entirely. When I need maximum reasoning capability or creative output quality, I still reach for flagship models. But for production workflows where efficiency matters, like document processing, agent automation, anything with long context, it's become my default choice. It does 80% of what I need at a fraction of the cost and with better speed. Now, efficiency is valuable, but it's not always a priority. Sometimes you have tasks that are complex enough that you need maximum model capacity and you are willing to pay the compute cost for it. That's the scenario where Gwyn 3 Max comes in. Over 1 trillion parameters, it rained on 36 trillion tokens. It's currently ranked third on the Alam Arena text leaderboard. That's a competitive position among the top models available today. The preview version achieves that ranking, and the official release includes further improvement to coding and agent capabilities. Quint 3 Max uses the core Quint 3 architecture with an addition they call the Global Batch Load Balancing Gloss during training. A large mixture of experts' model, one challenge is ensuring all the expert modules get trained effectively. You don't want some expert overutilized while others sit idle. The load balancing approach helps distribute training more evenly across experts which should mean the model use its parameters more effectively. But architecture aside, what matters is performance. So I put Quince Remax through some demanding task. First challenge. I have this Python code base for a distributed task queue. It's messy, undocumented, uses outdated pattern. Task, 
We factor the middle sync patterns. Add proper error handling, write comprehensive tests. This is typically a multi-hour job. Let's see what happens. It's analyzing the structure, identifying problematic patterns, now proposing a refactor plan. This is thoughtful, not just quick fixes. Look at this. It's not just refactoring individual functions, it's restructuring the module architecture. It caught a race condition in the worker pool that I left in there deliberately. The test is generated aren't the trivial examples. These are proper integration tests with edge cases. I run this code, it works. More important, it's cleaner than my original implementation. That's the value of a high capability model for complex refactoring work. Second test, agent capabilities. And the task is analyze the last 50 GitHub issues in the Langchain repository. Categorize by type, identify common pain points, propose architecture solutions. It's making GitHub API calls, parsing issue content, clustering similar problems, now cross-referencing with Langchain documentation to propose solutions that fit their existing architecture. This is useful analysis. It is not just summarizing. It's identifying patterns and make context appropriate recommendation. All right, the big question. How does Queen 3 Max stack up against GPT-4, Cloud Obos, and Gemini Pro? The models are usually used for complex work. For coding tasks, refactoring, architecture work, complex debugging, Queen 3 Max is genuinely competitive with Cloud Obos, which has been my go-to for code. The refactoring example I showed you, I ran similar tasks through Cloud Obos. The output quality is comparable. Cloud sometimes edges ahead on code documentation and explanation as well, but Quinn 3 Max handles architecture restructuring really well. Compared to GPT-4, I tested the same agent research task on GPT-4 Turbo, both model completed it successfully. GPT-4 was slightly faster in API response time, but Quinn 3 Max analysis was more structured. It naturally organized finding into clearer categories. For Asian tests specifically, I would say they run on par, with different strands. Against Gemini 1.5 Pro, which I use occasionally, Gemini has that massive context window going for it, up to 2 million tokens. For extreme long context tasks, that's still unmatched. But for the 120k to 256k range that I typically work in, Queen 3 masks perform comparable and often provide more detailed reasoning. Now, where do I still prefer the alternatives? For creative writing or content that need a specific voice, I still lean toward Cloud Opus. It has a certain prose quality that works better for that use case. For tasks requiring deep integration with Google services or multimodal capabilities, Gemini makes more sense. And GPT-4 still has the most extensive ecosystem and tool integrations. But can Quinn 3 Max replace GPT-4 or Cloud Opus in my workflow? For specific tasks, yes. Complex code refactoring and review is now in my rotation alongside Cloud. Multi-step research and analysis task, it competes directly with GPT-4 Turbo. Long context reasoning task, it's a strong alternative to all three. The leaderboard ranking isn't just high. Quinn 3 Max genuinely perform at the level of top tier models. It's not better at everything, but it's competitive enough that I'm actively choosing it for certain tasks where I would have previously defaulted to GPT-4 or Cloud. Both of these have thinking variants, and they are worth mentioning because they take a different approach to complex reasoning. Win 3 Next Thinking is the efficient model's reasoning version performs well on reasoning benchmarks. In their testing, it outperforms their own 30 billion and then 32 billion thinking models and competes with Gemini 2.5 flash thinking on several benchmarks. It uses parallel test time compute and a code interpreter. Essentially, it can explore multiple reasoning passes simultaneously. On mathematical reasoning benchmark like AIM E25 and HMT, it achieved perfect scores. Those are genuinely difficult tests. 
I tested this with a complex logic puzzle requiring multiple constraint satisfaction. Watch how it works through this. It's exploring different approaches, evaluating them, then selecting the most promising path. That's genuine multi-step reasoning. Let me give you some practical guidance on how to use each of these. Use Quin3NAX when you need high throughput for production workloads. You are processing long contexts regularly. Anything over 32K tokens, you are cost sensitive and need efficiency. Or you are building agents that need a strong tool calling without the overhead. I am actively using Win3NAX for customer support agents, processing conversation histories, document analysis pipelines, handling PDFs and reports and multi-sub automation workflows where speed matters. Use Queen 3 Max when you need maximum capability on complex tasks. You are doing advanced coding or architecture work. You need strong reasoning power or quality matters more than speed or cost. I am using Queen 3 Max for complex refactoring and code review, research analysis across multiple sources, and tasks where I would previously reach for GPT-4 or Cloud Obos. A few technical notes, if you are planning to use these. Win3 Next really does show that is robot advantage with long context. If you are building anything that process documents, conversation histories, or large code base, that efficiency gain is noticeable. Win3 Max requires more compute resources, obviously, but for tasks where you need that level of capability, the performance is competitive with top tier models. Both support long context windows, up to 256K, tokens for the instruct variants. In practice, I have been comfortable using 120k regularly. The thinking variants add reasoning capabilities but increase latency. Use them when you need that reasoning depth, not for simple queries. And more important, these are models under active development. I have noticed improvement between when I started testing and the official release. Here's what I have taken away from testing these models. Efficiency and capability don't have to be opposing goals. Quint 3 next shows that architecture innovation can deliver strong performance with significantly better resource utilization. Quint 3 Max shows that when you do scale up, you can achieve results that are competitive with leading models. For my workflow, both have found their place. Quint 3 next for production agent tasks and long context processing, where efficiency matters. Queen 3 Max for complex problem solving, where I need maximum capability. You can try both at chat.quen.ai, link in the description, along with the technical documentation and my detailed testing notes. Here's my suggestion. If you are building agents or working with long context, test the Queen 3 Max against whatever you are currently using. If you are doing complex coding or research work, Compare Quint 3 Max to GPT-4 or Cloud in your specific use case. See which performs better for your particular needs. Drop a comment with what you are testing these on. I am curious to hear what scenarios you find them useful for. And if you want more technical deep dive like this, hand on testing, honest assessment, subscribe. Finally, thanks for watching. Now go test something.